Hello there ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Adam. I'm here today in this video to provide you with some information and sort of a guide as to how you can make a calculator on Visual C++ with, you know, the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable. This project will go over the whole design of um, the calculator and will go ahead and uh, show you some of the code involved and a few checks that can be very helpful in designing this calculator. I'll make all of the um, files that you need available below in links and all that. So it should be very easy for you guys to follow. Now we have here um, the link to, um, you will of course need, I should say, you will of course need Microsoft Visual C++. You'll also need um, a few text editors and apart from that you'll probably need the libraries that I'm going to use in this project. Now let's get started. Excuse my rambling. We're going to go ahead and go to new. Oh, damn. We're going to go to project and we're going to select Windows Forms application. We'll just call it YT Math Pad. As you can see here, we of course have our little forms application right here, the Windows Forms application. We'll just rename it to YT Math Pad. And as you can see, it changes. Now, I don't like the background color, so I'm going to just change it to dark red because I can. Um, background image, I'm not going to select one at the moment. I'm going to set the border to fixed 3D because I don't want it to be resizable. I'm going to go ahead and disable um, maximization if I can find it. Um, maximize box will be switched off. So this way you can't really mess around with it that much to really just stuff around with it. So it's effectively a fixed sized box so you can't really resize it like similar to you know the regular Windows calculator like the regular Windows 7 calculator that you can't really resize. Now as you can see here we have our you know little uh, forms application. As you can see here we have a little forms application it looks pretty nice we've got our name here YT MathPad We've also disabled the maximization ability and we can also restore it just by clicking on it. Now that we've got that part out of the way, we're going to get into um, adding the buttons. Now we've named it as YT Math Pad and we've gone ahead and done all of the um, necessary um, changes that we need to do to this uh, Math Pad. So we're done with the just the framework of it and we're going to have to go ahead and add a few buttons and a few text boxes. Now every um, you know calculator and math pad and all that requires a um, output box. In this case, we're going to be using a text box. All right, so we have our text box here. Now what we need to do is I'll go ahead and try to resize it. Um, Except tab allows drop. We don't want that. Multi line is false. Read only. We'll set that to read only. Well, no, I actually won't. We want it visible. Word wraps true. And we'll call this the math box because this will work very well with our um, libraries that we're going to be using. And it appears to seem to be fine. So we'll go ahead and see if we can resize it will change this to 40 and it doesn't appear to actually want to resize so we'll just leave that one for now we're only making a very basic calculator right we'll put out a more advanced version of it so you guys can go through and take a look at it and what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and start adding our buttons for this calculator now you want to decide you know how big are the buttons for the calculator going to be pretty early or else you're going to have a bit of trouble actually you know making everything fit and work properly. We want our buttons to line up about there and we're going to go ahead and create a few of them and just put them all together. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to line these up a little bit. That's good. 
We're going to just do the design part right here and now so we can get it out of the way. And we're going to just do it to about 10. Alright, as you can see here, we have done about 10 buttons for our numerical digits. Now, we also want to use a few different mathematical operators like plus, minus, times, and divide. So that's about four more. So we're going to add about four more buttons, which I'll add below in a hopefully a single line. So it's about four more operators, and we also need an equals operator as well. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change the names to just one, and we also... Oh, crap. We want to change the name to just... I'll do B1, which equals, which represents B1, and we're going to add change the text here to one as well, so that way it should work pretty fine. So we're going to do two... And we're going to change that to B2. And you just go through and do this with all of the buttons until you're pretty much done. Now, I will leave a... Um, I do imagine I'll probably just um, leave a uh, link or something like that below to where you can skip this particular part if you don't actually want to see me just punch in values into a box. I mean, it's up to you. You can watch this if you like. We're going to do 4. We're going to do B4 here. And we're going to go ahead and name and add the text to these so that we can work with them in C++ or CLI or whatever the hell. Um, whatever programming jargon you can apply to what we're doing here. I'm going to change that to 5. So we've got 5. We're going to call this one... And we're going to call it 6. We want to have the numerical digit 6 there so that we can course punch it in on the calculator and it will work. Ow, oh, piss. B6, name B7, and we're going to change this to 7 because we want it to be the number 7 as I said before. Change that to 8. We just keep going through and doing this. This is the tedious part of making these things. Just go through and do this until you're done. We're going to do this one B9, and we're going to change the name to 9. 9, and we're going to change this name to 0. Well, text, I should say, to 0. And our name will be B0. Okay, we've done the, um, you know, the whole uh, numerical um, integer digit um, part of this so that it all should work you know pretty comfortably you just click on a button and it will you know go through the library that I've created and it will add the uh, digit that you put in into the um, mathematics system where you can then use the multi the um, operators below to process it now we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the operators now oh I probably shouldn't have done that We'll quickly just undo that because we don't want to make any code for it yet. Hopefully that shouldn't break anything. Now we're going to go ahead and start naming and labeling the buttons. Now for text we're going to do plus and we're going to go and name this as B plus. We're going to call this one just, we're going to use this one as minus. Ah, oh, piss. B minus. And we're going to use this one. We'll just change that to minus. So that should fit in just fine. And we're going to go ahead and change this one to the multiply symbol. In which case we'll just use an X rather than the uh, hash star or whatever it is. I'm going to call this one B times. Now we're going to go ahead and add B divide. And we're also got to, um, of course, label these buttons. 
So we want to use the divide symbol, which doesn't appear to be on my keyboard. So I'll go ahead and just use the slash since that effectively is the divide symbol. Of course, you probably could copy it off um, some ASCII site somewhere. Um, so we've done our divide symbol. Now we need to do the equal symbol. We're going to name this B equal. B equal. We've done that. Then we add the equal sign. Now everything is starting to of course take shape. We've gone we've completed the whole tedious process of going through and um, of course writing everything up. Now as you can see here this is a um, basically a line of uh, code or a handler of sort for the button whenever I press it. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on all of the mathematical operators and it will automatically generate the handler code as I like to refer to it for our math pad. So we have B equal, B plus, B minus, B times and B divide. Now I'm going to go ahead in a few minutes and um, use my library that I've uh, written a while ago that we can use to sort of handle all of the different uh, processes that we're going to perform on the calculator and this is all going to be done on another file. It should be relatively easy to include and I'll go ahead and show you guys. But I'm just going to quickly go ahead and clean all of this up so that it looks a bit like, you know, just regular C+. I'm going to go ahead and quickly just stop the video while I do a bunch of cleaning up and get all the handlers labeled and just make sure everything's so shiny. Okay, as you can see here I've gone ahead and prettied everything up. I've added um, some comments to just tell us what these handlers are and what they do. This is the equals operator, the plus operator, the times operator, divide, b1, b2, b3, b4, b5, b6, b7, b8, and b0. Now, basically here, anything that you put in here will run whenever you press the button that this is connected to. So let's say you typed in the number 10. You type in 1, then you type in 0. This basically, this system really is just that simple. You know, when you press a button, something here happens. Now, when I was developing this um, calculator the first time for myself, I've derived systems and I will, I should say, I've created systems and libraries that I use to make things a lot easier to do. Now, I'd expect most of you would have some understanding of C++ if you're going to undertake a project like this. Now there are a few important things we need to do. First of all here, this is my math library. This is what I use for, you know, the calculator that I'm building today. It is, you know, a tad bit rusty. There are some problems with it and, you know, certain programmers like these professionals out there would probably yell at me and say that this is horrible. Simply put it here, this um, mathematical library is functional and if you have an improved library then I'd very much like it if you could provide a prov an improved version of this. Okay, now to put it this way here, I'm not going to make a video on how one well, make the video all on this library. There's a lot of code involved and there's a lot of concepts involved that really would just cause more of a um, kerfuffle than it would be worth. I'm gonna. I'm not going to go into too much de detail on this library, but we are going to be using it today. Now we need to, of course, implement a few things to make this library work. We're going to need to use IO stream, CST def, and the math.h file. We're going to do a few file operations. I'm going to copy these um, the library files, which will be math.cpp and math.h. And I'm going to put them into this folder here, where all the codes in all the code is. And I'm going to put those in. I'm just going to check to make sure I don't have to do anything here. Okay. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take these um, includes, and I'm going to put them at the top of this file. Now that we have all these includes in place, we need to of course um, initialize the math system. My library's a bit, you know, juvenile and messed up, so you do need to put this in here.
just under you know um, public form one void you just put in set map system this will get everything going now that we've done this um, we've um, installed our you know framework for the uh, math library it all should work pretty well and as you can see it compiles and works fine now what we have to do is we actually have to make use of the library now you can see here that we of course need to on this end put in the set text um, the whole set text function to basically get everything going with the um, basically here the math box now as you can see here this works by basically taking in an integer of data and it makes sure that it's not too big and if it is it sets it to zero which would represent an error and then it would effectively just do pretty much nothing from there now what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put it under private so it should work right about here So we'll just um, make a few quick changes, just add some indenting, and that should be that. So we'll compile it just to make sure it works fine, and we are able to generate an executable. Okay, so we have our set text operator working, so we're going to go ahead and just give it a little go on the B1 function. So we're going to go ahead and use set text and we're going to put in the integer 1. Now another important thing is, is you'd want to put in using namespace std here because of the fact that you'd have to um, just use the uh, std namespace all the time on functions. So let's just see if it works. Okay, so when we type in 1, as you can see here, the... Uh, Mathematics, uh, the set text system will of course put 1 into our mathematics box. You press 1 again and you just get the same result. Now, this is uh, pretty cool. We can, you know, press uh, these little, um, you know, we can press buttons and we can get numbers. I mean, you can do the same with 2. You can go in here and then put in 2. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You know, this is all cool, but we need to, of course, make this into an actual calculator. And that's where the um, library comes in. Now, as you can see here, this library, I'll try to explain it. This here clears the mathematical operations in the uh, system and allows you to make another calculation. This injects the mathematics and this injects the mode. And this sets the operator, which is a char, could be plus, minus, divide, equals, or whatever. So, I'm going to go ahead and write up a little bit of code to give you guys an idea of how to use the uh, library that I've made. Although my library is admittedly flawed, and some would even say unsatisfactory, it does, however, work. Now, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and given you an idea how to use this library to, you know, do things like, uh, essentially make things like buttons work to add up on a calculator. Now, what this does here is that it injects math into the library, into the first um, box where you can then, say, times it or add or perform a process of addition to it. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this... Um, the template here. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in. So we use the integer one for this one and we just add it up for every single um, box we want to use. So we're just going to go here and we're just going to set the um, value in here for every single uh, button that we want. So four and we're going to add five going to do 6, 7, we're going to do 8, and we're going to do 9, and finally we're going to do 10. Actually, no, we're not going to do 10, we're going to do 0. Um, forgive that moment right there. 
So as you can see here, all of these um, buttons will inject mathematics um, basically like so. So we'll go ahead and see if this works. So I've entered the number 1 and the number 1 and, and so on. It all gets uh, stored up in this little math pad and we can then go on and basically just keep clicking on it. Now, one problem thing I did actually leave out was the clear um, the operator that I want, well the button I wanted to have to actually clear this out so that you know if there's a problem with the calculator you can just go ahead and just clear the text and clear the mathematics system. So we're going to go ahead and create a button and we're going to call it clear. Well it's actually more of an operator so we're going to do clear and we're going to do be clear. Now I've already done the code for this one um, on my other calculator that I've worked on so I'll just go ahead and copy the uh, templated code that I've got. So this is for the equals op and this is for the clear op. So we're going to use this one to clear math and to set the uh, text in the box to zero. So we're going to use this one as just clear. Alright, we'll try this again. Now as you can see when you punch in too many numbers, oh, that wasn't meant to happen. As you can see here, hopefully when you punch in too many numbers, or if you want clear numbers, this should in theory clear them. Unless this happens, which I'll probably try and figure it out. Okay. So, as you can see, we have our um, system here where we can clear out, uh, you know, we can of course clear out the uh, mass so that we can then do our sum again if there's an error. So, that part of it is all covered. Now, what we need to do now is um, use the templated code for the operators. Now we have, I believe it's one of, we've got about five or so operators. So what we're going to do for each of these operators is we're going to use the set math op function. So in the case of divide, we're going to need to go into the actual um, code and get what the divide operator would be. So you can see here we have a system to check what operators there are. So we have a divide operator, we're going to just change that to divide, and we have a times operator which is just a hash, so we'll go ahead and change that to little. Now, um, sorry for the skip here, but um, as you can see here we've set all of the um, operators for plus, minus, divide, times and divide. So this should make the calculator work pretty well. We also have the equals operator which makes the um, you know the library process the mathematics and then sets the text as the library and it also at the same time clears the uh, text out of the library so that way um, you can basically just do all your maths and all that um, again if you want to. Now I'll quickly just go ahead and demonstrate it. 2 plus 2 equals 4, clear that, 5 times 5 equals 25, 50 times 2 equals 100, um, 50 divided by 2 equals 25. Okay, now I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, um, uh, it's flawed and um, I do apologise for that. Um, I hope you guys do enjoy it though and I do hope that it's useful. If it is useful and you do enjoy it, leave a like. Um, please feel free to share it with friends. And I will release all of the code and information related to this project online. I encourage people to write up their own libraries, make improvements and post them because it would make things better for everyone else. If you think that my coding style is complete shit and that you would like to improve upon it, feel free comment this video, criticize it, share it, and I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and this is really just a tutorial on how you make a calculator in C++, and that's all there is to it. That's all guys, hope you enjoyed the video, see ya.